Iraq is often called the world's most dangerous country, but I'm flying to Baghdad to see if things are changing. See, it's been 20 years since the U.S. invasion. And while the U.S. State Department still says do not travel here due to terrorism, kidnapping, and armed conflict, NPR claims Baghdad is now relatively safe. This is the best uh, time from uh, more than 25 years ago, the last three years in, in Iraq, especially in Baghdad. I want to be uh, close uh, to the other countries. I want to let them know we are friendly, we are not terrorists. A lot of companies came also to invest in Iraq. And without an active war, stability is on the rise. They are just normal human beings. We use phones and we have Google. I'm a Friends fan and Big Bang Theory and those kind of series. Investments are now pouring into this oil-rich country. I even discover Iraq's first CrossFit gym. In a space of three years, we've seen a massive jump in terms of businesses, the developing of, of the, the cities. I'm not only talking about Baghdad, I'm talking about all cities. International companies, they want to invest in Iraq. A lot of people People work in choirs and we have really good elite people who are graduated. Walking around Baghdad now, there are a lot of places that just feel normal. People are going about their lives, they're buying their groceries, they're buying their books, they're meeting for coffee, they're having shawarma. It's actually hard to imagine that this city used to be such a dangerous place. Its new generation is ambitious. I'm not gonna be stuck at home and wait for Mr. Perfect to come to me. Get out since it's have oil and uh, other economic stuff. It can grow up financially. We will have a great future. Next 10 years, we will have skyrockets and we will have like a lot of big companies working. We are full of hope. There is something coming up and we are waiting for it. I meet one girl who fled to Germany as a refugee, but recently chose to come back to Iraq. Suddenly, as I was contacting my sisters or my mom, they were driving cars in the street and they were going out of home and it was safer. Something changed and people could have freedom and could speak their mind freely. Even tourism is starting up. It's more than 30 or 32 years that the tourism in Iraq was blocked. Since 2021, Iraq has allowed for visa on arrival for many travelers, including Americans. It's actually hard to imagine that this city used to be such a dangerous place. Baghdad is a great place to visit, to take a tour here in Baghdad. But can Iraq break through its decades-long cycle of war and violence to become an economic powerhouse of the Middle East? Or will its violent past haunt it for more decades to come? This is Iraq's first co-working space. This is actually a place that was built for entrepreneurs here in Baghdad. It's a co-working space and a startup incubator. Even the mindset of the people in the entrepreneurship sector has been growing in a really good way, in a really deeper understanding. Back in 2018, it was more of a concept. It's there is even an American room, which is meant to foster a connection between young dynamic Iraqis and the United States. The area was funded by the U.S. government. I also find this luxury outdoor dining area which is attached to a mall and it is blasting classical Italian music. All of this is a massive change to just a few years earlier. I meet a young girl who grew up to sounds of bombs. Every week we heard two or one. I was scared to go out till 18. My mother told us, uh, no, you, sh you should go outside to see the world. It's, it's okay, it's fine. In 2000 2003, the U.S.-led invasion toppled Saddam Hussein's regime, but a significant fighting continued with insurgents. In 2008, President Bush agreed to withdraw U.S. combat troops, and by the end of 2011, the last U.S. troops departed Iraq, marking a formal end to the war. But that withdrawal didn't eliminate all the violence, because ISIS emerged as a major threat in Iraq and Syria in the following years. When my mom grew up, she was not forced to wear hijab, but in the war, in the late war from 2003, the, the American war, uh, this idea became too strong in Iraq. Today, an increasing number of women are working again. The population of Iraq will reach 50 million around 10 to uh, 15 years now. But its biggest challenge to becoming a thriving economy in the heart of the Middle East might not be missiles or guns or a resurgence of ISIS, but Iraq's currency. People have money, but there is a one problem here, that the dinner. It's not constant. See, Iraq's currency has become unstable as the country has its official exchange rate to the U.S. dollar, but also a black market rate which has widened. To reduce the gap, it recently banned using the U.S. dollar for personal or 
business transactions. This was done out of a fear that its population would naturally prefer using dollar for its stability. This inconsistency will make the market slow down. Iraq's currency, the dinar, has been getting weaker compared to US dollars. There's a few reasons for this. The US is making it harder to get dollars into Iraq because it doesn't want them going into Iran, which it has sanctions on. I'm worried more about the currency. We have been living a lot of political disasters. People want dollars more because they trust them better. And there's even a black market for dollars, which makes the official rate even worse. This whole thing is causing prices to skyrocket, especially for imported stuff. The government's trying to fix things by cracking down on shady money transactions and flat out banning US dollar transactions. If the dollar goes up, people tend to stop wanting to buy things, you know, like it, because of the uncertainty. When you create panic, everyone holds on to their money. It's obviously a little bit frustrating. Everything seems to be unknown. What's now happening to the currency risks undermining Iraq's potential for stability and growth. This kind of economics is pretty heavy on us, even for startups. We don't have budgets. I meet multiple entrepreneurs who bring this up to me. We only import stuff from outside and all of it is with the American currency. It's actually prompting a risky future right now because the dollar is like now rising. Iraq has not much of a power of producing essential products. It's all in dollar. One possible hope is tourism in Iraq. Now, don't get me wrong, Baghdad will take time to rebrand its perception. But even though tourism is now open, you're hardly gonna see any tourists. During my week here, I saw little to no tourists, but since the government has opened tourism and scrapped visa requirements, there might be some hope. I meet locals who started Iraqi Travelers Club. It's not actually a cafe, but a group of locals who are excited to meet foreigners who visit Baghdad. We created a group on Facebook. The government started to create a new law, which uh, helped uh, more than 36 uh, countries from all over the world to uh, get them a visa on arrival. You've got the mountains and skiing, and then you come to Mid, which is, you know, Baghdad, and then you go to the south where you've got the marshes and the other bits that you can see. So, and obviously Babylon and Ur and all these places. Something I find quite shocking during my time here is just how its young population has so much optimism. More than half of its population in Iraq is under the age of 25. Fatima is the girl who left Germany amidst the war who says she was approached at the time by an NGO. She came back here in Iraq and she met us and she said, hey, you're, you seem like very smart and very bright people and I think you could have a better life if you just move to Germany. But she says in those five years that she was away, things changed and she wanted to come back to to be with her family and invest back in her own country. Before she had left Iraq, it had been an easy decision because of the situation in Baghdad. They had to hire a private driver to take me to university and bring me back home because it was not safe and I wasn't being able to visit restaurants or meet up with friends outside. Like, it was better at home. We didn't have uh, too much openness for male-female friendship. But when she got back, things had changed drastically. Another thing that surprises me while I'm here is most people don't seem to care where I'm from. You might think I'd get a strong reaction being Iranian and American, but young people here don't care. And this is for two reasons. The first is that they deeply understand that a person and the government of their country are two different things. And the second is, well, YouTube and the internet. They were it's too traditional, holding on into the culture and into the boundaries that they were raised up on it. For us, I think we had internet, we had television, we could see the world in a different way. A lot of people uh, just study in English and our educational system in the universities is mainly in English since I don't know when, but I studied in English mainly. In schools, it is more influenced right now because of the international schools that's coming here. A generation that grows up on YouTube rather than say its country's local TV channels is going to be much more likely to want to be part of a thriving global society when they can see what is possible if people just like them in other countries. This is something I'm seeing firsthand. My niece, she's seven years old right now and she speaks more English than Arabic because she's used to love and watch all the time Peppa Pig and she grew up 
What's in it? The internet actually made the, the world smaller. Because of our interest in the community, we managed to follow the, this new generation. But what is the future of Iraq? In 10 years, will it look more like Dubai or will it still struggle to turn into a safe, stable and thriving economy? Baghdad will turn into a good trade center. Believe in the future of Iraq. I've seen like my sisters were already graduating from college and they were finding jobs. And as I told you before that, this was not possible. Everyone I meet here has a different vision of its future. But one thing they all share is they're all optimistic. 2035, there's a, a struggle between my mind and my heart. My heart says I would love to see Baghdad being the Baghdad that we always dreamt of. But that's all. I don't want it to lose it. Why we are just going to develop or just uh, going to rule. That is our concern as an architect. We are people who always have smile on their face, who always want to be happy, who always laugh. But with its currency, will that stop its ambitions? Mm. Don't know what's happening next. As an architect, I ask her why she never left or tried to leave Iraq. If I will leave Iraq and my friends did, I would just gonna take the move with Iraq or with Baghdad to get up level. So we cannot leave our home because of that we could find it difficult here. <laughs>